Hey, how you doing? So if you hadn't noticed, carbon dioxide is my favorite subject right now. And so you're going to be hearing about it a lot. Um, there's a lot of advantages to having carbon dioxide of any kind, whatever kind you can afford or you can cope with, manage. Sometimes our lives take us in a place where we can't manage just everything. But um, no matter what kind of carbon dioxide you use, it is going to benefit the growth of your plants in your aquarium. And today I want to uh, discuss some of the pros and cons of having carbon dioxide injected into your tank. So the, the one main advantage of having carbon dioxide injected is massive, massive plant growth. Plants will grow so fast and so healthy, you won't even know what happened. And then following up to that, not directly because of the carbon dioxide, but because of the fast growth of the plants, your algae will become so stressed out, they can't compete for the nutrients, and so they start to die off. And there's going to be a lot of changes. You will notice exactly what I'm talking about. Algae will die off very, very fast. And I mean, it may not go down right to zero, but you know, it will be so low, so low levels of algae that it won't even bother you anymore. So that's what carbon dioxide does for you. Now I just want to talk about why carbon dioxide is so good, why it does this. Um, so for that we have to understand photosynthesis. Now photo photosynthesis is when plants take sun energy or light energy and um, they convert carbon dioxide and water into all the organic substances that they need, like cellulose, which is the fiber. The fiber, it makes some, some little tubes, straws kind of. That's where your stem comes in. Your stem is made up of little straws that are full of sap. And um, so the sap will transport the carbon dioxide and the water to all the little cells that do the photosynthesis. And then the, after they photosynthesize and create um, organic products, not just cellulose, they produce cellulose as well. Cellulose, carbon, uh, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, enzymes, what else? All those good things that even um, human beings need those things as well. Plants can make their own human beings eat the plants and use the plants, what the plants have made. Um, now these organic products that the plant makes are all long chain, some are not so long chain, but chains of carbon atoms. So it, it's mostly carbon, okay? The stuff that they're making is mostly carbon with um, hydrogen and oxygen atoms attached to the carbon, carbon chain. So the hydrogen and oxygen they get from water, because water is H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Um, and so, yeah, so plants need carbon dioxide more than anything. They even need it more than water, actually. It's just that, you know, we're so used to giving them water. If they're in an aquarium, they already have the water. We don't even have to think about watering an aquatic plant. And so we don't really think about it. And this is why I don't really like the term macronutrients applied to NPK. Um, it makes it sound as though plants use mostly NPK, which is not true at all. They use mostly carbon dioxide and water, and the NPK is attached to some of the carbons in the carbon chain, and that's how you get different substances. So some substances will have 
nothing but carbon dioxide and water in it, and some will have nitrogen attached, some will have phosphorus attached, some will have potassium attached, and then some of the um, some of the lesser, my, I think there's some secondary micronu mic, uh, uh, macronutrients, which are calcium, magnesium, and sulfate. Those are used in lesser amounts, but they're still necessary. And then your um, trace elements are also used in very, very small amounts. And they're usually not incorporated into the molecules of the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. They're used more as enzymes. So enzymes help a reaction to take place even though they're not part of the end product. So um, that's a lot of science in a few sentences. I hope I didn't confuse you with that, but we will be going over those things again because this uh, video is more about carbon dioxide rather than the science behind that. I just wanted to give you that a little bit so that you understand where, why, you know, why I'm going on and on about carbon dioxide. Because plant, not only aquarium plants, but the land plants as well are m using mostly carbon dioxide. The only thing is that they're living in air, and the air has about 12% carbon dioxide in it, so they don't need added car carbon dioxide. Although those big commercial greenhouses, they do add carbon dioxide to their greenhouses, and they ramp up the light levels because everything has to be in balance. We're going to talk more about balance in another video, not right now. Um, so yeah, even on land, people inject carbon dioxide. In fact, sometimes the carbon dioxide in those greenhouses is so high that by law they are supposed to have an alarm to go off when the carbon dioxide is getting too high for the workers because the human beings can't, can't inhale too much carbon dioxide. But anyway, so that is why carbon dioxide is so important. And the advantage is that you will get rapid growth. And uh, because the plants are growing so rapidly, the algae will be outcompeted. So those two things are fantastic advantages. Now the disadvantages of <laughs> the one big disadvantage to me is that the plants grow so fast. So why is that a disadvantage? Because then I have to come along and spend my time trimming them because the fish need some space to swim. So, so the one advantage, the main advantage is also a disadvantage. Now the other big disadvantage that I can think of is the management of the carbon dioxide. Especially if you don't have a lot of equipment, like me, I'm, I'm working with yeast fermentation with, you know, just a quite primitive setup, really. Because at night, I do not want carbon dioxide going into the water because the plants are not photosynthesizing during the night. They're not using up the carbon dioxide. And I don't want my fish to be poisoned by carbon, too much carbon dioxide in the water. So I have to turn off and then I waste my carbon dioxide at night. I just, because there's no way of me turning off the yeast fermentation. So I just have to release a certain valve and the carbon dioxide goes into the room instead of into the water. And I've had some problems with forgetting the carbon dioxide on at night. The fish don't really like that at all. And so, you know, so that's the, uh, the main disadvantage. I can't think of any other disadvantages, actually. The disadvantage, yeah, is definitely just managing it. And then, of course, it's much more difficult to make up the solution every 
Um, it's about every couple of weeks for me because I have two setups. One, uh, the one on the left is not working right now because I'm making up a solution to start in the, uh, tomorrow morning. And the one on the right is working. I don't think you can see because the, tube, the tubing is black so you can't see it against the black background. That black thing that you see right there is my thermostat heat controller, heater controller. Managing the setup to me is one of the disadvantages of having it like this. But that's because I'm using yeast fermentation. If you have one of the little canisters that uses um, citric acid and baking soda, they're not as much trouble. And then if you have um, pressurized carbon dioxide, that's all automated and everything. So, yeah. I think the little canisters can be uh, timed as well, can't they? Yeah, I think so. With a solenoid. I'm not really sh up on the, um, the science behind that stuff, so I'm not too sure. Yeah. So, guys and gals, <laughs> make sure that you have carbon dioxide. Make sure that you manage it properly. Okay. And before I go, let me just show you the back of my aquarium so that you can see exactly how I do it. Yeah, so here's the back of my aquarium. This one is the one that's working right now. So the, the yeast is in here. And this is the thing that I open at night. It's just clamped. Um, I want to find valves because a little valve would be much easier and better. Um, I just haven't had time to go find single valves. I have those valve, those, I have these kind of valves. I have several of these, but I don't have the single ones. So anyway, the yeast is in here. It goes out and gets washed in this water, just a water bottle. And then it comes up here and goes into the aquarium. There. And then this side, I'm in the process of making the yeast right now. And that will start in the morning. I don't want to start it at night because I'll have to waste it. No point wasting. So that, okay, and then here you can see that I bought the little doohickeys, the um, bottle caps. I bought the special ones that are already got the connectors on them. It's really worth the price. They're cheap and so easy to use rather than trying to make your own. So yeah, oops. Hey, that's it for today. I'm hoping that this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.